You know how all the Lord of the Rings movies that always come out are always gay porn mostly? Um, and then the only effort that was put into the Lord of the Rings uh, series in the early 2000s for the straight porn was Arwen and um, Aragorn. And that was you know, kind of nice, even though I didn't get to see it. I instead had, because they cut all porn in uh, around here out of movies, so um, I had to read, you know, fan fiction of it online, where it's, you know, as accurate to it, uh, everything as possible. But most of that fan fiction back then was gay porn written, because apparently they did gay porn in the early 90s of Lord of the Rings as well, like they just keep doing it. High budget, and I didn't know, I didn't even see that, I haven't even heard who was in it or anything. So anyways, what we need is something sensual for, like, people of this era. So what I was thinking was, we need the first age of the elves. We need the grand, sweeping accomplishments, you know, in their fresh heyday, where, you know, they have different creatures... Uh, trained to help them build enormous things. So, like, for example, their beautiful ships that are all silvery, made out of different materials, can be lifted for commerce and other people's types of vessels from around the world by this enormous water wheel. They would be, like, on the side of a cliff where each cupped area, as it turns, you know, from a giant waterfall, um, coming over a cliff, it turns each time, and then they drop a, you know, crank thing, and it stops turning it, so then the ship can go off, you know, up higher onto the lake up above each in turn. That seems like the type of thing we need with all the beautiful, uh, extenuated, actually created in 3D onto the hopefully real landscape, like actually do some real design, some design for the artist to get done. I just keep closing my eye because uh, I whipped myself in the face with a towel, so right when I was thinking about this. Anyways, uh, and so then you can have like sexy, um, what are those called? Um, trolls or whatever that were like all gray and ugly. You gotta like make them look good for the porn. Uh... We can throw in some, like, dragons that the elves, you know, have seduced. Different stuff. We need to be epic. Um, and it needs to be driven by people. I don't know. It seems like exploring what the dragons are up to seems like a good idea. Then you can bring in dwarves that are like, um, you know... You get those people that are, like, sexy from middle America. They're all squat, you know. They make good dwarves, you know. Get some people from around the world. Get some people from uh, West Africa that are, you know, look dwarven. There's different parts of the world where there's people that look that way. So we need to mix it up, you know. Because we need to have it be a trade port that's, like, besieged by those nasty pirates, like the origins of them, that showed up in the uh, Lord of the Rings end movie from a different continent. We need, uh, you know, an easy scourge that has its own agenda of destruction or something retarded, probably because they're too fancy and they've come to a planet where they don't like how fancy they are. That's the, probably the obvious plot. So uh, that's all I got for now, I guess. You got anything to add, Grant? What I have to add is that what I'm really horrified is is that my suspicions are of uh, what you were saying because everybody was saying it at me as if they were more than just being irrational. That somehow Lord of the Rings had pornography in it, the ones that were Aragorn. I'm like, yeah, it would make sense between all the buff, disgusting orc dudes. And I yeah. really, really don't want to watch that. So if you're going to do something classier, don't do Amazon Prime with black people. Do some pornography. That's my advice. Well, that's why I was saying you get a bunch of people that can look elven now and whatever other races and you do some real sensual porn, you know? Like, for example, 
you got different races of people meeting and then they think each other are hot and it turns into porn after they make trade agreements. You know, real well, that's direct stuff. Almost like taking the, the Cimmerillion and different things like that that talk about infinite history or any tribal history. You know, they say that it's basically like yeah. religion, history, and different cultures. And just saying, actually cover, covering the part where somebody begat somebody else. In other words, just the sex. And then a little bit of the, the trade and environments and the architecture, like, so that that way, people understand people actually have sex. Don't don't you don't you yeah. don't, in order to actually have generations? Because there seems yes. to be this disconnect in Lord of the Rings where they just don't have sex and just elf babies don't ever appear. And well, that's ever why has sense it's or like it's like they're fresh and they got their giant crystal towers of energy glowing everywhere. They're real virile. Uh, you know, the evil hasn't come upon the land yet, really, at all. And, like, you need, like, a sexy, you know, smuggler pirate woman who, like, does super flips all over the place and her boat, like, magically picks up and, like, flows with the sun up into the air places, you know? That would be pretty fucking awesome. And, um, I don't know. I just need uh, this content in my life, and uh, we need all the rest of the excitement that comes along with it. All the action figures and uh, cool stuff and video games. So I'm trying to inspire people here. I hope it's working. That's all. But also, um, my grandmother Kirsten keeps whining at me like this morning because I just have to explain this a little bit. I, ho I know this is upsets Grant. I don't know why when I talk like this. Um, just that supposedly there's never any money in the world and she's an old hag who says it every day at me. And so it's not logical. And there's a little bit of money. It's not that bad. Like, of course, she claims she had to get a credit card again. So, you know... I want you to all feel bad while you think about that and uh, don't pay me. That's all. So what I was saying the plot would simply be is the elves have shown up on a planet where there's tensions between two different continents and so their amazing accomplishments um and the energy that is sourced magically from their crystal towers and everything is an easy a target. So what I d I'm saying here is I hate Game of Thrones. So this is like the Wheel of Trade or whatever. Where, like I was saying, it's an enormous uh, water wheel. Beyond all scope. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so many supposed to be great epic things happening. And, you know, they're using dragons and they're flying on the backs of them. And they have these scepters that they shoot energy out of that, like, carves rock faces, you know. That, like, is, like, channeled and, like, shot and, like, beamed into, like, you know. Like, it's, like, laser grinding but with magic. Like, all that shit. And they're just, like, making these huge statues on the sides of mountains. And so what happens is... It's a sneak attack by these guys from the other continent who come in with their own dragons who were promised um, whatever amounts of loot and gold and whatever. So then it's about destroying the trade in the area, disrupting it quickly before anybody else can come in and stop it because there's obviously reinforcements. And it should just be this elven woman who's more adventurous whoever else you want to have as she's out wherever figures out what's going on and has to race back and t warn everyone and get them to believe her about exactly what's going on of course not that they wouldn't entirely um all the details further you know she should probably be a smuggler of intense substances that um, 
the elves aren't sure whether or not they want to be trading with people so openly. That sort of thing, you know what I mean? I think this would be pretty good, and uh, we need to have the feeling of the elves and how they've been in space and how they've come to a new planet, actually, with all of their star drives and everything, and how they're turning them into investment on the planet. That's the interest here. Okay, so you have, like these guys from the other continent, how they're planning on invading, is they're on the black dragons way up high in the atmosphere, in the thermals. And it's so high up that there's they can't breathe. So they're like zombies who take like black substances that like kill them and they're still alive because it's magic. So then they are up on the dragons way up high and they're trying to drop, drop, bombs on the uh, giant water wheel and at the same time there's like steampunk submarines because I don't give a shit that are coming up from underwater and meanwhile you have the uh, like different races of the dwarves and everything meeting for the first time there. You have, like, the Puerto Rican sexy dwarves, and, you know, you get people from all over the world, different races that look that way, dwarven still, like I said, you should. And so, it's like an opportunity for sexy-looking people of different races to get some Lord of the Rings action done. It's a simple project, um... I'm trying to make it, you know, singular, one and done feeling, but while establishing the concept feel of how epic the uh, early days of the Lord of the Rings is supposed to be. I think you're doing a fine job. I think that Lord of the Rings was way too gothic, and yeah. then it became way too something else with The Hobbit, and neither of those were correct, so what yeah. you're doing makes a lot more sense. So you have the elves on their, like, flying, like, speeders that are charged with like starlight so they're flying up at night and they're spectrograph scanning with their crystals to locate where they're dropping the bombs and then they have enormous charge up you know energy like laser cannons on the fortress and they're like shooting them up and blowing the bombs up in midair and it's like creating huge Thunderstorms, you know, instantly. Yes, from their crystal fortress. Yes. Oh, strong bad. Yes, definitely. <sighs> then you gotta have a fight with some traitor with the sexy elven woman and the guy who's on the inside on some part of, you know, enormous section of the turning thing where the gear is. And then she, you know, somebody, she falls off, you know at the end and lands on some dragon or something stupid. I don't know. Something like that. Alright, so the plot here is that this smuggler woman, um, she's smuggling uh, sex light crystals that basically cause sexuality to be felt between anything and anything. Just it increases sexuality like light the sensation through the nerves or whatever of anything. Pleasure and reciprocal connection. just And so she... The elves don't approve of the spreading of dangerous substances that are their alchemical concentrates without all these different things, you know, happening. So she's considered... Um, you know, whatever. That's what I was saying. She's edgy. So, she puts a, like, spell on the uh, seal on the box of stuff, unusual large order that she never agrees to usually do, and so she's suspicious, and so she puts, uh, you know, the seal supposedly on the box to say it's authentic. 
it's inspelled like it's mirrored enough that she can see out of it with a little mirror she has, like hand mirror. So it goes to where, um, because this is sex, because everything is sex and they're always hiding it, um, there's evil, you know, dragon that's uh, full of, you know, black magic supposedly, and they're going to, uh, you know, use its evil black jizz to, uh, just a second, I forgot the details, just a second. So the point is they're using impossibly, you know, black magic from between the stars drawn in with like these weird blood solar panels um, at night. And so they try to mix her energy with other energy to bind the uh, thoughts of, you know, different creatures with different sorcerers and um, stuff in the middle of, you know, sex supposedly to spoof the energy. So there's like evil sharks that they're going to like use as like giant evil great white sharks they're gonna swim in and blow everything up and so then on the other side of the equation you have to have the cool creatures where there's like water ants that live near the coast that you know swim around with their long roots stick their heads out you know and have their branches so they can battle you know evil sharks that are coming into the bay that's all super deep. Nearly, it's like a super trench, oceanic trench cliff area. Um, of course, this would make a good uh, video game, which is uh, everything I think of. I always see it as a video game and a movie at the same time. So, like, Avatar movies bore me. So the next decade of Avatar movies and beyond, um, or within bonus, bonus movies probably, um, they're beautifully visually, but they don't like elicit a sense of thrill in me because of the storyline or anything. So that's why this Lord of the Rings thing, like, you got like evil jellyfish that like got supercharged evil energy that are like, you know, gonna come in and shock everything. You've got you know, riders on these big stingrays, you know, an armada of, like, you know, savage, like, goblins, uh, I don't know, um, you know, they're like goblin, um, uh, navy seals, you know, be hilarious, and what other creatures are there, uh, I was thinking of one other, oh, of course, octopus, you know, evil octopi, that's pretty hot, you know. You can do lots of kinky stuff with that. But uh, then you gotta fight the uh, giant ants that uh, live along the uh, area coastline. And they need to be like, uh, you know, cool scenes where they're like ants are like hanging out with like dolphins and dolphins like swim around, jump over them and stuff. It's really awesome. You gotta have like extreme sweeping transitions from like epic good things happening and silly stuff then hyper you know black silly you know reverse and then um of course this doesn't seem silly i just you know say that when you watch it um but like you have to have the whatever elven you know secretary administrator basically because elves don't have councils or rulers at the time so has always you know talked bullshit at this sexy pirate woman you know before they even arrived on the planet so they have personal enmity so the whole plot is all this stuff is going to happen and then this person supposedly there's repairs happening and an upgrade at the last minute to the you know gear thing so it's a good opportunity for the betrayal of like sneaking in something there in the midst of the confusion explosives to blow that up or whatever and then claim it happened in the midst of war somehow no one knows how so then she figures that out based off of some clues of like 
something she saw through scrying that there's like a connection to that person, you know, some symbol or something. So she confronts the woman there because uh, I like women that are sexy doing things and then has her scry thing connect to like the projector on the giant clouds overhead as they're like talking and beating the shit out of each other by the gears, you know, as everything's going to explode so that everybody sees it and they don't, you know, realize that's the type of drama I like. Of course, this woman uh, that's evil, the that betraying the elves, got infected by, like, black raids in space because she was looking out at, you know, black energy void area they had to pass. And so then it, like, entered her consciousness because she looked at what she shouldn't have. You know how Lord of the Rings always is. That's always the lesson of Lord of the Rings. Just don't look at it. Just move along. <laughs> no, you always say, no, we don't want any. No, thank you. No, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. All right. I know how much uh, Soda Cat likes um, goblin porn, so I think he should be, like, team leader, squad leader of, like, the epic goblin navy seal team on the giant manta ray of, of numerous ones but like the one that you focus in on as they like say stuff and like prepare to invade like they're the the characters ones who like you know don't get killed and like pull out you know because like it's a suicide mission they realize you know and they thought they were just in for some uh sabotage uh you see what i mean it's pretty good stuff So what was going to happen is the, you know, um, light bombs that the evil elf is going to use is going to blow up a, uh, like a dwarven, like, soldering cannon that's being used to, you know, work in the area that, like, is going to, she's, like, overcharging and then she's going to explode it. So then, um, the sexy pirate woman has her super condensed light crystals, you know, with her. So, like, she puts them in the compartment where the you put, like, additional charge fuse to explode the, the uh, cannon into igniting. So, but it's, like, way too powerful of ultra crystals of energy. Then, like... The cannon's tilted up, straight up, you know, with, like, her chopping the right, you know, ropes and uh, pulleys and stuff, you know, so that it swings up right as it's going to explode, and then it blasts up into the night sky, you know, a huge amount of light that hits the, uh, all the storms of exploded bombs of, uh, you know, hail and tornadoes, you know, whipping up sideways out into the sky, not even coming downwards, you know, towards the ground, a lot of them. And then there's so much light from collected starlight that she has of these sex crystals that it just completely, like, UV blasts everything out into space in the whole of their area, just completely just decimating and killing all the giant evil crow forces of goblins and shit that are flying in and all that bullshit and just uh, wiping them off the map, you know what I mean? That's the type of explosion I want so the Game of Thrones nobody ever talks about it again. See, the goblins, they hear about the invasion of the fortress to, like, blow up the Wheel of Trade. So they just come in because they're opportunists and they misread a uh, description on some plans they get of the you know, larger tower fortress area. And they misread the word and they assume it's for, like, storage of valuables, but it's, like, Instead, when they get climb up the side of the cliff like goblins do, you know, all expertly with all their goblin tools, then they, like, break in there and, you know, open 
advanced locks with their, you know, goblin skills and magic and bullshit. And then they get in there, and then it's just like, you know, all the people who can't fight, who are just like thinkers, who are valuable. So then they're all like, oh man, like, what's the point of this? But then they're like, you know, wearing valuable jewels that they want anyways. Because they want the gems because, you know, they're like addicted to starlight and shit. So then the, you know, sex happens naturally as, you know, it's a steamy situation, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that's kind of the concept, and then it's not really very rapey, is it, I guess? That's just, uh, it's kind of just porn that's charged, you know, with the atmosphere of war. That's what I like about it. Ooh, we went near